Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, the three pillars, up onto a mountain by themselves. Six days after some pretty big events. Six days after Jesus sat with his disciples and said, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Well, some say Elijah, and some say the prophet, and they give a bunch of other answers. And then Jesus say, Well, who do you all say I am? And Peter stands up, Simon, stands up. He confesses, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, Ah, blessed are you, Simon bar for flesh and blood, your reason has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say, you are Peter, and upon this rock, meaning you, Peter, and your confession, because confession is never in a vacuum. Confession comes from the mouth of men and women and children. On this, the church is built, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But then the next day, Jesus is teaching his disciples about his journey to Jerusalem, his pilgrimage to the cross, the work of reconciliation being handed over into the hands of wicked men. And Peter says, oh, far be it from you, Lord. This shall never happen to you. And Jesus says, get behind me, you antagonist, you adversary. Get behind me, Satan, for you have not your mind set on the things of God, but on the things of man. And six days after these events that Jesus takes the three up, onto the mountain by themselves, and before them he is transfigured, transformed, and his face shines like the sun, and his garments are white as the light, and then appears with him Moses and Elijah, the whole of the Old Testament, conversing with Jesus about his exodus to Jerusalem, his death and his resurrection, the passion, his work of reconciling all men, women, and children with the Father. While they're talking, Peter speaks, Oh, Lord, it is good that we are here. Let me make for you three tabernacles. Let me locate you and Moses and Elijah up here on this mountain. And we'll stay here. Why not, right? I mean, it's a good place to be. They're set apart, separated from all the hustle and bustle that's going on in the world. Why not stay up on the mountain with Jesus? Why not stay there with this glorified Christ? You see him in his divine nature. But who is Peter leaving back home? Who is back there, down at the bottom of the mountain? His wife, his family and his friends, his job, everything back down there. And he leaves it all to stay up there with Jesus, this perfect Jesus that's glowing with the brightness of the sun. I mean, that's the Jesus we want to be around, right? I mean, imagine if Doc Brown drove into church today with a DeLorean and opened it up and said, you can go back to any time and see whatever Jesus you want to. I mean, would any of us choose a gruesome Jesus? I mean, we'd want to go see Jesus, maybe Ricky Bobby style, and see him in the little manger. Or maybe we'd want to go see Jesus feed the 5,000. Or maybe we'd want to go and see the empty tomb. And see him going before the disciples into Galilee. Or maybe we'd want to go back to the upper room with Thomas putting his finger and his hand into Christ. See the resurrected Jesus, the risen Savior. None of us would go back in time to see the gruesome Christ. To see the Jesus on trial. The scourging. The rejection the spitting and the wagging of the heads. We we wouldn't go and see the Jesus who has nails pierced through wrists and feet, spear into the side, crown of thorns digging into the skull. We wouldn't go and see that Jesus. We don't want to see the Jesus who's suffering and takes a sip from the sponge filled with vinegar. None of us want to go see that suffering Christ. 
we'd want to see something a little more joyful, a little more happy, because that's what we want in life, isn't it? Imagine if I said to you, you could go back in time to any moment, see any person, so you don't have to suffer anymore. Wouldn't you want to go back and see that husband or wife who's gone before you, that mother or father, that son? I mean, imagine if you had a child die. Let's say you had a child die at 15. Would you not give anything to go back in time and see that child again? And act, don't say, no, 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 I trust. I don't buy it. You have an old Adam, you have sin, you have debaseness. Of course you'd want to go back and see that child again. No one in their right mind would say no to that. We want all of the joy without any of the suffering, and that's what Peter wanted. Because in the midst of Peter speaking, the cloud enveloped them, and from the cloud came the great voice of the Father who said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased Heed his voice. Listen to him. And they fell prostrate on their faces, terrified. And Jesus, after touching them, speaks and says, Rise up and stop being scared. And as they came down, after lifting up their eyes, seeing Jesus only, they came down from the mountain and Jesus said, tell no one about what you just saw until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. Because Jesus came not to be glorified on the mountain of transfiguration, but to suffer on the Mount of Atonement. He came not to be tabernacled there and placed in a box there on that mountain, but to come and box himself in on the cross, boxing all of the sin of the world there on his flesh, in his flesh, that he may suffer for the life of the world. Remember your treasury from this morning, my brothers and sisters. When Dr. Luther said, as quoted from the Heidelberg Disputation, God can be found only in suffering and the cross. We do not find Jesus, God, who he really is in all this other stuff. We find God, Jesus, for who he really is in his blood, wounds, and death for us. His suffering in our stead. Him giving up his life for us. Coming down from the mountain and going through the plain of our tumultuous sin and ascending upon the cursed tree that we may bear our sins no more. Suffering the fullness of our depravity for us. Suffering our wish we could moments. Suffering our desires to live a sanitized existence where we have no troubles. Jesus took them all and put them to death in his blood that we may have life. There is where you find God. There is how you know God is in the suffering of Christ the crucified. Because that is where God comes to you still, in your suffering. You're not going to find God in prosperity. You're not going to find him when everything goes hunky-dory and right in life. You find Jesus in your suffering. When you are anxious and worried, there is Christ. When you doubt and have skepticism overcoming your heart, there is Christ. When you fail, there is Christ. When you lose, there is Christ. When you grieve and are in pain that endures, there is Christ in your suffering, walking with you alongside with you in your suffering, speaking to you, letting you heed his voice and hear him as he says, take heart, for it is but a little time. And this too shall pass. For this is temporary. And this light momentary affliction is preparing for you a weight of glory beyond all compre comprehension. For remember St. Peter, my brothers and sisters, who did come down from that mountain and did suffer. For he did not stay on that mountain with Jesus and Moses and Elijah but came down and went through the plain of sin and depravity and suffering and pressure and affliction. And then he himself suffered. For that wife that was left down at the bottom of that mountain back home, he had to then watch be crucified before his very eyes. 
while they prepared his cross for him. And that whole time Jesus speaking to him in that suffering. Take heart, Peter. This too will pass. For I prepared for you bliss beyond all comprehension. Peace I leave with you, did Jesus say to Peter. And he says the same to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives you. Therefore let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. For as we suffer with Christ, so shall we live with Christ. We suffer in this life. We suffer sin. We suffer anxiety. We suffer worry. We suffer loss. And Christ says, take heart. I have suffered all for your good that this may not overcome you, that you may have life in me. So my dear brothers and sisters, take heart. For your transfigured Lord ascended the cross that your suffering may not be in vain, but that your suffering may be in Christ. Your grief, your pain, it's going to be all right. It's going to end one day. And that day will be a day of joyful homecoming when you're brought to the realm immortal where you will be just like Christ, shining with the brightness of the sun, garments bright as the light, cleansed in the blood of Jesus, washed and renewed and now holy and eternal. That is where we're going. We'll suffer a little bit, but Christ is with us the whole way. And will carry us through this valley of sorrow to himself in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen.